Hey. Whoa. Got that notification. We... Oh, nice. Very nice. Uh, hey, if you are catching this show right now and it's already over, uh, there's going to be some show notes posted down below in the comments or in the description. So please check that out after the show is over or obviously if you're watching it after it's already done. But uh, yeah, welcome to Monday Live. Welcome, welcome. Uh, all right. Let's see here. Yeah, Danny Danny says uh, he's switching to Nikon now. He's going to become that one Nikon guy. Shut up, <laughs> dude. Don't tell anybody <laughs> about that, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, the whole the whole trip I was at was a whole a whole guys for the whole thing. It was supposed to trip people up, right? Yeah. Secretly going to uh, another place for the Nikon testing grounds. <clears throat> Nikon camp. <laughs> shooting, shooting the stars. <laughs> Nikon mirrorless has no star eater issues. That's what Danny's telling me. It's gonna be an ultimate low light mirrorless <laughs> camera. Uh, it's going to be probably like a stop better than the A7S II. Ooh. And Sony comes out three stops better than the Nikon. <laughs> it's, it's going to go an additional three, like four, not five over the S2. They're going to make a leaps and bounds over uh, the, A the A7S II and the Nikon. They're like, this This just sees right in the dark. You can see everything. <laughs> it can see into the future. Oh. oh shoot i'm excited though i i'm just curious i just found it really funny when um their little teasers that are coming out and they had i don't know if you saw the other one there was like a new one that came out and it was just showing like their old previous models um but it's it's good times and i know not, it's not part of our topic tonight but i think canon I, I don't know it's it seems like the rumor bill is that they might not they might not have a new mount it might actually still be their ef um that might be pretty crazy if they keep their same ef mount but it's crazy it's massive then it'll be massive <laughs> what's going on chat i missed all of you guys i'm so bad so sorry about uh last week being gone but yes it is true nikon sent me out some no dude it was just I'm just lying with you guys don't don't make up stuff you don't need that out. don't need don't need that to pop up anywhere else <laughs> I wouldn't mind them sending me one though. I mean, uh, just for testing. I mean, geez, I, I wouldn't, I don't know why they wouldn't want to try and convince users that have just switched to Sony and have them test out this mirrorless stuff. I would imagine it'd be a smart idea, a smart move on their part. Um, but I'd be willing to try it out though. All right. What is going on here? <laughs> Froggy first in the house. What is going on, man? Um, Julian's asking, has there been an update release for the Tamron? Yes, there has. And they sent me over this to take a look at. So, uh, let's see. There's a, there's also a new Tamron lens, right? The 17 to like 50 or something, 2.8 to like F4. F4. I, was that going to be an E-mount though? Does anyone know in the chat? What was the, was that supposed to be E mount or I think it was an EF and Nikon mount though. I don't yeah. think it was an actual. I mean, I I, I would still love a lens like that because there's nothing for APS-C that's f two point eight, right? Uh, like a zoom, but I mean that's still not bad. It probably keep the size uh, fairly small, hopefully. But was that lens uh, APS-C or a full frame? <laughs> That's a good question. I'm going to say APS-C, though. That sounds like an APS-C lens, but I could be wrong. Why wouldn't they make it a uh, constant f2.8? <laughs> Let's see here. Um, Owen Stevenson's, I want a 16 to 35, a 70 to 200. Should I go to 70 to 200 G series and then wait for the Tamron ultra wide zoom? Um. I mean, if you need a 70 to 200 G Master right now, there's really nothing you can do. Unless you're talking about the F4, there's not, it's not a bad lens. Um, as far as Tamron's offerings, we don't. I don't know if there's a there's an official release date yet for that. AB positive Bulldogs <laughs> hashtag arbitrage. What's up, guys? What's going on, dude? Chris Vernal, dang Danny, your desk setup is getting upgraded every show. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. 
let's see here. Between the 24 to 70 and the 70 to 200 lens, which one would you buy for events? I would prioritize a 24 to 70 first and maybe use a Sony 85 F1.8 to compensate for the 7200 or like the low light performance um, and getting that shallow depth of field with the 85. Someone say Nikon will come with the Arturo bag. Heck yeah. Nice. Nice. Nikon all branded Arturo bag. <laughs> it, will, it will fit. It will fit. All the lenses that Nikon will have for that lens, which is zero. <laughs> John Louis, welcome back, Danny. How's the new Nikon mirrorless camera? Just got back myself, used the A7R3 with the Tamron 28 to 75. Missed the size and weight of the 6300. Maybe you should have brought it. <laughs> oh, man. A7R3 20 to 75 is pretty light, in my opinion. Which one? What setup? A7R3? Yeah, A7R3 and a 20 to 75. It's pretty light, in my yeah. opinion. Unless yeah, he's talking about bad. Unless you're talking about like form factor wise, then yeah, that 6500 yeah. is slim as heck. Yeah, if you go with the 6500 with the 20 to 75, I think that's a killer combo only because of the stabilization you get. Yeah. Um, that's a really good combo, I would say. But 6300 is still not bad. So, the Martian one saying Tamron should have an email design for that newly announced 17 to 35 wide angle. Folks, just to let you know, we are still in pre-show mode. We've got about another seven, six or seven minutes before we start the show. Um, but yeah, uh, again, questions, if you have any now, just drop them by or any comments. If not, we'll take the questions towards the end of the show. Um, and if you're just landing in right now, the show notes will be posted after the show's over. Do 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 do. Yeah, I can't tell, man. This new lens, APS-C in full frame, just says format compatibility. Hmm. No, seventeen thirty-five sounds like a full frame. Sounds like a full frame. It sounds like a full frame. It says APS slash full frame, so I I believe it works on a full frame camera. So the hat. Yeah. Full frame. Yeah, it's a, it has to be full frame. I mean, Sigma has a 17 to 70 f2.8 to f4. Uh -huh. That's APS-C. So this, that 17 to 35 has to be full frame. So nice. yeah, I'm going to bank on it being full frame. Hopefully we see something like that with a constant 2.8 aperture across the range, but I don't know. <laughs> I don't mind. I don't mind it switching. I mean, if you think about it, Jason, that that would be pretty much a sixteen to thirty-five f four, except True. at the wide end you get two point eight, right? True. So it's it's basically like your sixteen thirty-five for people. So I think it'll be a really good alternative, um, maybe in the future. So yeah, definitely. If there's an e mount version for that, that'll be a good stuff. Uh, Six hundred dollars yeah. for an e mount version of seventeen to thirty-five f two point <laughs> f four. Anybody? Any takers in the chat? Yeah, let us know if you're interested in that ultra wide. Robert McDaniel, so what's your opinion on using a CPL? or doing the work in post. Jason, I don't know if I'm stupid or something. Uh, what What is CPL? That's a good question. Is it circular polarizer? <laughs> yeah, is that what you, circular polarizer is? Is that what it is? <laughs> Fathom Rocker wants an F2.8 constant. Well, Fathom Rocker, if you want to drop 2,300 big ones or something like that, I mean, you can get the Sony one. <laughs> Oh, it is. Yes. Robert McDaniel is saying yes. I don't know. I don't use circular polarizers. Yeah, Robert. Sorry, man. I, I, yeah, I don't use circular polarizers. I use ND filters. <laughs> uh, Chris Imamura, I'll buy that 17 to 35 for about 600 bucks. Yeah, I think it's a good alternative. So if they can keep the form factor fairly uh, small and 
lightweight as they're doing, I think it's all good, man. Jason, I saw, uh, I think in your stories, there was like a picture that you had a setup for, or was it in your, your post? You were using a different mic brand. Oh, I'm using a DD microphone. How is that? I don't know. I haven't really listened. To <laughs> <laughs> I was like, he's, he's going to, he's trying out a different brand. Okay. Yeah. All right. DD sent, sent that to me. It's like their new pro BS pro mic. I don't know. I, I, I don't remember the model name exactly, but it's not out yet. So they sent it out for a few of us to try it out. And I figured since I don't really use much of the audio from the weddings, it'd be a good time to test it out. Yeah. So I just have to listen back to some of the stuff that I shot from the wedding to see if the audio quality is good. Well, I like what I like about it so far is that um, it has a, um, it's a rechargeable mic via USB-C and you get to control the gain on the mic. So it's pretty cool. It's a little okay. dial that can rotate to control the gain of the mic. It's pretty awesome. Nice. So, Jason, uh, of all those, the whole MacBook situation, um, what did you end up doing with that? So you sent back the MacBook Pro already, right? I returned the MacBook Pro. It's gone. <laughs> did you, did and, you return yours? Oh, yeah, I did. I was going to make the video, and then I was like, you know what? I just don't care anymore. There was... So I you don't back make the video. I recorded some material for it and I recorded my talking head for it. And then Max had like hammered out maybe like 20 of these videos. I'm, I'm exaggerating here, but there was just like video on video on video. And I said, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do one. I'm just not. <laughs> just not. Dude, everybody was on top of their shiz with that, man. Like everybody was just dropping videos on the MacBook Pro. And I'm like, I cannot keep up. Everybody <laughs> was literally doing some sort of heat throttling with their MacBook. And I I'm like how it's, I like how the overheating stuff came back, but in this time with a laptop, <laughs> <laughs> but Jason, have you heard since we didn't buy a laptop? I, did you hear about AMD Ryzen's 32 core processor that was just uh, pushed out to reviewers? Uh, it's going to be released. August 13th, you can pick it up soon. Oh, uh, it's AMD Ryzen 2. It's 32 cores, 64 threads. It is going to destroy anything you want to do with it. I mean, virtualization and, and programs that take advantage of it, but I don't know if how, how well Premiere Pro will take advantage of that, but it's ins some insane stuff. That's so. the real question. How does Premiere run on it? That's all I'm <laughs> care about. But dude, 32 cores, man, I mean, Hey, we've, we've, up, man. we've seen already Premiere is very CPU intensive at times, not so much GPU occasions. So but. you think you think it might do better? Uh, maybe within the rendering, because rendering you'll usually see your CPU usage go pretty high. Um, maybe if you use Handbrake or something, I don't know. You know, it just depends. But uh, they were testing out some Adobe applications, but I didn't see Premiere come up as one of their ones that they were testing. I should hit um, up AMD and be like, hey, just. Said that well, are they just sending that? Well, they've got the they have down? they have their reviewers that they they reach out to already. They've already just they already they had received them last week. They just had they were allowed to unbox them today, basically. So they unboxed them either last night or today, and they released their videos. So like Linus, they, Linus Tech Tip, and all those guys. Yeah, everyone finally got it, and they were just opened them up already. So, um, but yeah, there's a 32 core coming out. In, in August 13, I think is when you can get it already. So it's going to be pretty intense. And anyone that had the motherboard from the Threadripper, the 16 core one, it's the same motherboard. So you don't have to swap out to a new motherboard. You just got to get a new bio. So AMD's killing it right now. Um, yes. Intel's on. Intel's got to be on watch right now. That's what I would say. <laughs> All right. Crazy. Let's see here. Folks, welcome to Monday Live, uh, our weekly podcast. As you know, I go by that one camera guy, and I'm here with the one and only Jason Bonk. Jason, say hi. What's going on, guys? <laughs> uh, tonight's episode, we are going to be talking a little bit about this guy here. It is the Sigma 105 F1.4 Boca Master is what I would say. And then Jason's going to share a little bit about his experience and I guess my thoughts on uh, the Tamron 20 to 75. 
and then we'll take some Q and A. We'll talk about some random topics. We'll go over uh, new gear and just catch up on some stuff. I I was gone last week. I was in Malibu for a secret. Um, oh, I can't talk about that. But um, yeah, I was gone last week. <laughs> I wasn't gone for Nikon mirrorless. Obviously, I would not get any connections like that, unfortunately. But I was out at a yearbook conference or a yearbook camp, and so I was there for about a week. That's why I missed the show last week. And so I'm back, and I'm just trying to get back into the groove of things. i am got to get some videos done, and I go back to work officially next week. So I've been on vacation, so I'm back to work next week already. So things are going to get very, very interesting very soon. So we usually start with hashtag new gear this evening. So let us know if you got anything this week or maybe last week and you didn't get a chance to talk about it. But let us know, hashtag new gear. Post it down in the chat and we'll cover them in, as soon as we get to it. But we're going to go ahead and start off with Jason, our GAS master. What have you recently picked up, Jason? Dang, I don't even know where I put it. But uh, I picked up a few <laughs> APS stuff, actually. I, I got the, uh, the Make Heat battery grip for the 6500. And I also got the uh, newer 35 millimeter f1.7 manual lens. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's the same lens that make he sells. It's just rebranded by newer. So I uh, got that lens at a really good deal. It was on accident too. Like I was just browsing Amazon to see what I what I should buy, <laughs> and then I saw it as a lightning deal, and I was like, oh, you know what, sixty bucks for this 35 millimeter lens and an f1.7? Why not? You know. So I just picked it up. Haven't shot anything that's worth sharing, but so far I'm quite impressed with it. It's actually pretty awesome. Nice. Just got, just got a pixel peep and see like. You, have you garbage. have you actually shot like with a manual focus lens with the manual aperture before? Like, is oh. it kind of your bread, kind of your thing, or is it kind of new to you? You know, I'm gonna I'm gonna say I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so used to autofocus. Like it's 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 my thing, you know. It's just like it's the yeah. reason why I bought these Sony cameras for, you know, because they have amazing autofocus. So having to go back to using manual focus lens is just a little bit tougher. But uh, for anybody who's willing to put up with it, I think you can you can still get some really nice results with these manual focus lens. So I'm willing to suck it up, uh, make some reviews about it, and yeah, see how good it is. <laughs> I'm just being honest. <laughs> we should do a poll, like who who's cool with manual focus lenses and who's not. <laughs> oh, I lit I literally have like a an Instagram post coming out tomorrow saying like if you guys are like team autofocus or team manual focus. But I'm I'm for sure team autofocus. It's or if you're team both. I mean, it's oh, yeah. cool too. It's cool too. I will I will manual focus with this lens when I need to. Um even though it had, you know the camera systems have pretty good autofocusing, if I'm shooting like an event or something, I will shoot manual focus. And um, to be, it, it's kind of, I don't know. I guess I'm just salty a little bit. I do like that the technology's gotten better, but I still think everyone needs to learn how to manually focus still, because you never know when you might need to be able to manually focus. Oh, totally. Because totally. I mean, even for you with your wedding, what you're doing, there's times when you do manual focus still. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's of not. Course. You can't depend on manual focus uh, or autofocus 100%. And those of you in the chat, if you if you want to share experience on that, we'd love to know. Um, but there's times when you just can't trust autofocusing. You have to control it yourself. And so if you're not ready for it and you haven't practiced, especially, it's going to bite you later. And that's the way that's the way I would put it. So, but yeah, I, I like the the manual focus lenses. I think they're pretty cool, especially for the price point. And it slows you down. It And I don't think... I think it just if you're if you're not in a rush, I think I like that slow pace, uh, just to kind of appreciate your photography a little bit more. But uh, yeah, but for folks who just have time and you want to practice that craft, I would I'm totally for it. Yeah, I think it's something that if you get you use it enough, you get used to it. It's, it shouldn't be a huge deal. It's just like I was like this the whole time. I was like, hold on, <laughs> hold on. I don't know. If, I don't know if I'm getting it. You're yeah. like my hands cramping. My hands cramping. <laughs> <laughs> hold on. I don't know. Focus peaking is definitely not very accurate, though. Unfortunately, at times, I, yeah, it's just so confusing with all the dots on the screen. But when you manual focus with like a monitor or something, when you're shooting videos, oh my god, it just helps so much. Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I think for videos, I I don't mind manual focusing, but gosh, manual focusing for photos—that's the whole other level. Mike Homner says he was at a Canon mirrorless private party. <laughs> Ooh. 
no, I guess he's saying I was that, but yeah, I, I no, it's that's that's not gonna happen. <laughs> All right, uh, let me go ahead and talk about some of the new gear that I recently picked up. So, as you know already, I have a standing desk, which is this desk right here. You got and another then, one, and then I think yes, what was it yesterday, two days ago? I picked up a second standing desk, which I switched off back here. This guy, <laughs> on this, like, two standing desk. Look, you got a standing desk. Manny got a standing desk. I think a couple other people got standing desks too, like other YouTubers. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. Crazy. What the heck happened? Hey, man, I, I use it. I have a floor mat now, too, like a mat, so I'll use it. For... Anti-fatigue mat. I just got a regular kitchen mat at Costco, but it's working pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> it's meant for you to stand on, so I'm using that. And then I have, like, the window sort of tinted, so it's shaded down now, so that way the exposure is a little more balanced, so you can oh. actually have the exposure balanced out better. All right. Um, uh, Danny's going to become a tech reviewer. Look at that. He got that set up. He's got that changing LED light right half here. Right there. Yeah, there, you, there you go. So there's the there's that right there. So you can see there. And then the lights. This is another thing I picked up. I bought this actually for the, for the conference. It's one of those light sticks. And you can cycle it through, and it'll change color. So when you're doing light painting, it'll actually change colors as you're doing that. So I picked it up. I'm just using it as like for that right now for the video because, well, I spent like 250 bucks on it. So it looks good, it. man. I don't I don't see any banding. I'm not sure if it's the potato quality, but I don't see any banding. <laughs> <in this> light, <laughs> so. like good quality light. I hope so. I hope so. We shall we shall see because I, um, I, I bought some of those like cheap, like little LED strips to put it behind my TV. And I noticed like it was just bad. Just I just mm. see it. It was just bad. <laughs> gotta get like um gotta get like Philip Hughes light. Yeah, that's I think that's the next thing I'm gonna take a look at. Uh and then I picked up a um a TerraMaster external raid. Oh, was um, that the one that went on sale? No, 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 no. I saw that one, but this one is Thunderbolt 3 compatible. Oh, and oh, it's 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 five bay. <laughs> And it has a um, a transfer speeds of up. What I like about it, when I saw the test, if you just put regular five, uh, regular three and a half inch disc like drives in that, you can still get very fast transfer speeds of like 500 to 800 megabytes per second transfer speeds through Thunderbolt. So I picked it up. It's a little pricey um but it's cheaper than the qnap i was going to get so i have some older drives that i have i'm going to test it on first i was going to drop some money on some um some iron wolf drives but i didn't want to right now i got two drobos that you can see up here uh i don't like this transfer speeds it's really frustrating to deal with that time so that's why i went and picked up the terra master but nice yeah i just hope it's okay i, I get a little worried it's it's gonna like fail on me so we'll see what happens so, yeah. Knock on wood. <laughs> Always <laughs> have multiple backups. I can't, man. Not with my crappy potato internet, man. I'd I'd love to have a I'd love to be able to back up on the internet, but I can't. <laughs> oh man. That's what I hate. Let's see. Awesome some stuff. Oh, one more thing. Oh, okay. One more thing. Uh oh. Uh -oh. um. So I was trying to get the Aperture 120D for a while now. Like I ordered it off Amazon. So I ordered it off Amazon maybe like two weeks, two and a half weeks ago, okay? And then it's like I get an email three days later or four days later saying, sorry, it's going to be delayed until like August 30th or something. I'm like, what? I find another seller on Amazon. I ordered again. I said, okay, cool. And then a day later it says, oh, it's going to be delayed till August 30th. I got so frustrated. I just, I don't know. I just placed an order through B and H Photo, so I don't expect that to come in until this Friday. So holy cow! Wait, where did you buy it from? I was getting it. I was trying to get it through Amazon through Aperture. Like the okay. the, the seller was Aperture, but they won't send it. I'm like, what the hell's going on? And so I just ordered through B and H Photo. So we'll see how that goes. But uh, yeah, these Aperture lighting is nice. Using the 120D right now. Bam. Nice. See, like what I'm doing right now is I got this big umbrella and I've got two LED lights I'm having to like beam into. <laughs> but it still looks good. 
Yeah, I mean, I'm just, I'm just like, maybe I don't even need it. I don't know who knows, but <laughs> yeah. I'm the Browns asking, why do you have such slow internet? I live in the boonies, man. I live in the boonies, dude. I there's literally just like fields, just like fields of like grapes and almonds and all this stuff around where I live. So yes, yeah. cows where they interfere with the internet. So <sighs> yeah, there's once in a while I'll see the cows chewing on the barbed wire, and I'm wondering why are they doing that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> they're like, get me, out, get me out of here, man! Come on, help me out. That's that's why the steaks taste so juicy. It's because they chew on those internet. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. Let's go ahead and check out the comments, guys. Let's see what you guys have picked up recently. Um Geek Loki was saying, I had a Threadripper 1950X and it's super fast. Geek, why are you saying you had a Threadripper? What does that mean? Uh let's see here. Chris Varnell picked up the Ronin S. Chris. Dang. Traitor. Dang. Traitor. <laughs> Rich Ramos, new gear, Sony 24 one, uh, to 105 F4 G series. Ellie, or Eli, sorry, new gear, Rokinon 12 millimeter F2 and Red River Papers for my new Canon printer. Which, which Canon printer was that? Let's see here. Mike. Homner, new gear, new to me, but a used Manfrotto 190 XB. Very nice. That, I mean, it's just the legs, right? I, I, I'm still trying to understand the naming conventions and stuff. I but. think so. I'm using the X190 right now, too. Great pair of legs. Great I, pair of legs. I, I'm glad I finally purchased a set of nice legs. Yeah. You got me, you need some nice legs for your camera. You, you do need some nice legs for the, cam <laughs> the cameras. Uh, War Chordo. Uh, hashtag new gear a7 III crazy expensive <laughs> Sony 128 cart and a Tamron 20 to 75. Not bad at all. Uh, Alan Andrews new gear Sony 16 to 35 G Master and Ronin S. You know I saw someone post. I don't know if you saw it too, but there was a Facebook post of someone that showed their 16 to 35 delivered through BNH Photo and oh, yeah. Did you see that? It was just a box. It was just the box in a box. There was no padding. And oh. so the lens was just dance. The box was just dancing around. I mean, it's supposed to be fine, but I don't know. It's kind of, I, I don't know. Let me know in the comments if you've ever gotten a bad delivery before, even either from Amazon or from B&H or something. It's just weird. But there was one time I had hard, I ordered a hard drive from B&H photo. It, there was no padding. It was just the hard drive and it was, it didn't work. It, it didn't work. So I had to send it back. I'm Dang. Sorry, but, What's well, inside on? of the inside the Sony lenses, there's like a like it's put inside like another cushion, like that little lens bag. So it might be okay, but ouch, man. Well, you also don't want your box to get damaged too, to some degree. I mean, it's That's like true. That is you true. want it to look nice. You know, honestly, like I've I've seen a couple of those stories that you know it's it's happening from B and H. I've never had it to me, like have like that delivered to me before but i've seen like quite a quite a quite a number of uh, people receiving their their stuff like that which is like zero padding Scary. and it's i mean it's okay too because you can send it back if there's an issue or you feel that there's an issue with it like i said before i don't know if i mentioned on the show a while back where i ordered an ipad and it was already open and it was supposed to be brand new and it, the, the wrapping had already been taken off. And I was like, what is going on? So I sent it back, but you know, they're pretty good about getting that stuff exchanged, which is okay. It's stuff like that does happen, but I mean, it's if that, be nice if it doesn't. I mean, if that happened to me, I would, I would want like an overnight shipping just cause like it's frustrating having to wait. Especially like mm. with B and H it's not like, it's not like a two day shipping, like prime. It's just like, you have to wait like another three or four days, depending on what kind of shipping that you chose. Or imagine if you ordered a 20 to 75, which no one can get. Yeah. Right. Imagine you ordered that and then you want to exchange it. Good luck. You know, it's, it's going to suck. So that's what really stinks about that whole situation. All right. Yeah. Let's okay. see here. Um, HL or HI Bradder. I built a standing desk, <laughs> non adjustable though. <laughs> Feels bad. <laughs> I mean, hey, it's already at that perfect height, and it's a standing desk. I, I think it's pretty good. Yeah, I it's good. Um, 
You know, I, Jason, are you still using? Do you do you be honest? Do you use your standing desk as a standing desk? Sometimes, you know, be honest, been pretty lazy. <laughs> do you you don't have the floor pad thing, right? No, I do. I have the anti fatigue yeah. mat. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I should I should stand I should stand more. I don't know. <sighs> my uh, my Apple Watch reminds me to stand. Jason, you should get one. Join join the Apple Watch. Come on, man. Oh, I also need that like Apple product where you have to stick this thing on your back to remind you to get good posture or something. Have you seen that at the <laughs> Apple Store? I need that too, man. I haven't seen that. Oh, so all right. Need to buy things. Sorry, folks. I know we're just drowning out here. We're still under the new gear segment. We'll get to our main topics in a little bit here. Yeah. Um, pink. Yeah. Pink. pink, pink. Hey, new gear. Sony twenty eight to F two. A deck loop and a Sony Multipod VCT dot uh, dash MP1. I'm assuming that's a little pistol grip or so. Uh, cool. So John here just like through through a subtle through a little subtle uh, new gear, uh, new roller bag, Tesla Model Three. <laughs> <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Did did he get? Is he just saying a new roller bag and a Tesla Model 3? Is that what he's trying to say? I, I think he bought two things. He was just like being nonchalant about it. Yeah, new roller bag and a Tesla Model 3. Nice. Very this nice. Uh, Fathom Rocker says, I bought the legs for my standing desk and bolted an IKEA tabletop to it and call it a day. Nice. nice. Simon PR, new gear, small rig cage for Alpha 6500 and small rig cage for the A7 III with vertical grip. Very Those cool. come in handy. Uh, John Louis Imperio, Microsoft Surface Go, 128 gigabyte, 8 gigabyte RAM with a cobalt blue uh, Alcantara type. Al Alcantara. Alcantara. <laughs> Open CP1 runs okay on it on the go. I shouldn't want to, I shouldn't want to afford a Sigma 105 for a while. <laughs> Nice. Yeah, I, I saw some of the stuff about the, the the Microsoft Surface Go. Um, it's very, it's not bad. I I think it's a it's good for what it is. I think that's the the point about that particular series. Um, Jason, have you you know when we were looking at laptops and then um, I was looking because I got the thirteen inch MacBook Pro. I started researching and I I I noticed the other one called the Huawei MateBook Pro X. I don't yeah. know if that ever came up when you were searching for it. But they have a 13-inch model with a quad-core CPU, and it also has a discrete graphics card, which is like their um, – it's like an NVIDIA – it's like a lower-end graphics card, but it's enough to do video editing on, and it's a 13-inch laptop, and um, I don't know. That's because I was I was interested in a 13-inch laptop. I don't know if anybody else has one of those Huawei MateBook Pros. I'd like Gotta to go 15, that. man. At 13, is too small. I, I'm using a 13 inch Alienware right now. It's just too bulky, but I have my 15 inch there when I need it. I mean, the screen um, is just so small. I can't edit anything on my 15. Let's see. Adrian Thomas, new gear, Sony A6500 and the 18 to 105 F4G. Nice. Ron Lemelin, uh, new gear, Sony 7200 G Master. Very nice. <laughs> yes. Yes. Very expensive. Um, Jim Penn, new gear, mounting hardware, iPad on tripod to take advantage of wireless tethering when tripoding. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> that one Chinese guy, new gear, my Ronin S is finally here, handling that 24 to 70 G Master like a champ. Nice. That's good. James Duguid, new gear, dual battery charger. Walter, hashtag new cure, Sigma 18 to 35, 50 to 100, 1.8, small rig L bracket for the 6500. Very nice. Nice. I should have just sold you mine. I still have my 50 to 100. Why do I still have it? Uh, let's see. Chris Barr says, I tell you what, the 6500 has moved down to 1100 bucks with no sale going right now. I'm calling a new APSC replacement coming soon. The Alpha 6300 did not take the same price hit. Does Chris Barr know something we don't, Jason? SR6. 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 Hmm, Chris Barr. Does he know? Does he know something? <laughs> A6700 coming soon. Let's see here.
All right. I think that's it. Okay. All right. What do we what do we talk about next? I don't know. <laughs> All right. We're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about the Tamron twenty to seventy five briefly. Um, so I think I mentioned it a couple weeks back, but Tamron had reached out to me. I guess they were bothered by one of my videos talking about me sending back my Tamron twenty to seventy five. Sounds like a familiar story I had with Sony some time ago, but um, <laughs> they, they had contacted me after the whole video autofocusing issues that this thing had, which really frustrated me. It was, it was really bad, but um, they sent me this over just for loaning purposes, not to keep, but I just did some initial tests earlier today and I, and the video autofocusing is working just fine. Um, but what's weird, Jason is I don't know if the, I gotta, I'm curious now, I kinda wanna test it with, with different cameras because it seems as though the autofocusing performance is different with a different camera body. Um, oh. If that makes any sense. So when I had on the A9 and I was doing video autofocusing tests, it performed weird differently than I, when I had on the A7 III. Oh. And I was just like, what? I, I gotta make, confirm that, but it just seemed, like the A7 III seemed snappier, the A9 didn't. Like it wasn't as snappier on the A9. It was a little strange. Um, so I don't know. So I'm gonna definitely test it with an APS-C body as well and try to see if there's any discerning difference. But so far it hasn't locked up. Haven't had any weird, strange issues. But um, Jason, if you don't mind sharing like a minute or so of your time with it, the Tamron so far. Uh, yeah, your thoughts so on it. So I made an update video last week, kind of just running a few tests at my local park. And I was, I was impressed, you know, definitely the autofocus has improved, um, over the last time over when they first shipped it out, um, shipped out the lenses. Um, when I first got the lens, it was definitely like when I was pointing at an object or a subject, it was like, I'm, I was questioning myself. I was like, what is this, is this in focus or is this not in focus? It was weird. I took the lens out, shot two weddings with it. And I literally had to pull out my small HD monitor just to make absolutely sure that my subjects in focus. And it was just incredibly frustrating to have that lens just not working, um, at a, at a, at a, at a, um, wedding. So. I updated the firmware, um, tried it out at my local park. Everything works fine. Everything's peachy. I tried it out at a wedding again. I didn't bring a 24 to 70 this time. I was oh really, my really ballsy what? with it. What? Really ballsy with it. Had full confidence that it will work well. And it did. It worked really well. Um, had no issues with it. Never had to question the lens or the camera or my shot if my subject was in focus or not. And I felt like the autofocus worked extremely well. Again, like Danny said, uh, with the a7 III, the focus is pretty snappy. Actually, no, I used it on the a7 R3. Mm. And it, it was it was working pretty well as well. We had it on the a7 III for some gimbal work and no issues whatsoever. Um, I have to do look through a lot of the footage first and then make a, another conclusive video about the Tamron 20 to 75. But it's definitely not as bad as the time that Danny was using it when he was oh behind the scenes for me for a wedding. Dude, that was that was just garbage, man. Um, it was bad. You know, I, you know, the fact that this lens is so hard to get, I think I might just ask Tamron if I can buy it off of him. Not gonna lie. Because on my on my little paper it says if I don't return it, I'm gonna be billed. <laughs> it's so hard to get this lens right now. That's so why I'm just like <laughs> Yeah, everybody's saying like it's out of stock everywhere. A73 yeah. is out of stock. It's crazy. It's crazy I, to it's crazy hard to get this lens. I think I'm just gonna, I think I'm just gonna ask. I, I've been really contemplating on picking up the 2470 G Master, that's why. I have been uh been on the fence about it. But it was I more the reason <laughs> The reason why I didn't want to, you want to trade me for money. Um, <laughs> the reason why I didn't want to get the 2075 was after the whole video thing, but for seven ninety nine for this thing, it's so worth it now. Like you, you can't say it's not worth having in your bag, especially if you're starting. Someone posted a really good question. They said, Troy X is asking, how is the autofocus of this lens on the Sony a seven two? And I think that's a really damn good question. And I definitely want to try it out, Troy, because I still have my A7 II or, and even A7R II, I guess, because I think since this is a bargain lens, I'm pretty sure people would probably be pairing it up with maybe an A7 II or even A7R II if they're still on that model. So 
Um, we'll definitely look at that, Troy. Yeah, definitely curious about that. But I mean, like, I I also had, I wouldn't say I had a similar thought, but I I did also think about thought about picking up the twenty to seventy five just because it's just so lightweight and it's so versatile yeah. with that constant two point eight aperture. Um, and I know a lot of people have always uh, have been asking in the comments, like, is twenty eight wide enough? Honestly, it's not, and it's not the it's not the matter of just stepping back try to, to get the shot. It's just not wide enough. You're not getting that similar look that you would get on a 24 millimeter. I had um, my gimbal friend who was using the setup at the wedding, and he was telling me that 28 is definitely not wide enough. You're just not getting that look. <laughs> yeah, I I agree with that completely. Um, but I think in your case, where you're shooting a lot of these events. Excuse me. Oh, Danny. Ugh, it's carbonated. <laughs> it's carbonated water. What's going on right there? Um, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. Uh, he has a lot to uh, say, but they, they, they're they trying to get out. <laughs> he was trying to get at the same time. It's like, what should I say? Uh, no, I think it's a solid choice, like I said. And it was the same thing I said in my video. I, I The only negative thing was the video autofocus, which they looks like they've kind of fixed already. So... If you got your Tamron and it's working for you, I, I think it's a good steal over the 24 to 70 G Master in terms of saving money. It's, I think it's worth the money you save. It's just you need to find another lens to kind of help you out there. And that's why I'm curious about the Tamron 17 to 35 F2.8 to F4, Jason. That's re that'd be a nice pairing with this kit. Um, yeah, for 600 bucks if that's what the price is. So. Yeah. Totally. Good times all around, but I still want the 2470 G Master. Damn it. <laughs> ah, or even the 24105. Oh, man. I don't have the Trinity of lenses, but Jason does. I'm a little bit jelly, but I want that 35, 24 to 70, 7200. Ah, right. And, and I've also been contemplating the 400 2.8 again. I've been like, <sighs> man, I don't know, man. I don't know, Jason. Just do it, man. Just do it. Just, just, just do it. And I was looking at my bank account, and I'm like, it's gonna get empty. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> what's, the what's the point of what's the point of all this money if you're not gonna spend it on a 400 2.8, man? <laughs> and I was looking at the rental fees from Lens Rental. It's 500 bucks for for a week. Oh. So I was like, uh, I mean, I'll just rent it. I oh, jeez, I'll just eat the cost up, man. Whatever. I'm, I don't want to spend. I don't want to spend twelve grand. It's so much money. Uh, Sony Pro Support. Can I? Can I get that lens on loan? <laughs> Johnny Fan's been shooting with that thing. I'm just like, man, I'm so jelly. Oh, he was carrying that. He was carrying that around. I should have been like, Johnny, can I? Can I shoot some with that, man? Come on. Um, sorry, man. We are tangenting so much, folks. So we are done with the Tamron 2075 for right now. If you have any more questions on, just let us know. Uh, we can talk about that a little bit more. People are saying Flypath has said, I recently picked up the A7 Mark III and the 28 to 75, and it's been very solid so far. Um, very nice. Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Pedro Balthazar says he purchased his and returned it, had some major vignetting whenever I'd shoot outside. It is going to be pronounced a little bit, um, but if it doesn't work for your workflow, then, you know, by all means, man, turn that. Brad Lay, A7 III, plus a 2875 for the win. Andy Garcia is asking Jason if he's going to update his DJI, DJI to Ronin S. I oh, mean, I don't need another big gimbal in my life. <laughs> but I <laughs> might have a chance to play with one this coming weekend, so we'll oh. see. We'll uh -oh. see. Uh-oh. Is it is it iPhone do? <laughs> oh, shit! Yeah. Up. Hey man, hey, bro, that <laughs> All right, so let's go ahead and talk about the Boca Master, uh, yes. which is this right here. Uh, I think it's available on Lens Rental. So if you do mm -hmm. want to rent it out, in the video, I have a video coming out soon, hopefully tomorrow or the day after. I'm still trying to finish it up. Danny, but, Danny, that looks like a cone, dude. That looks like a cone. Just turn that. Yeah. Just turn that around. There. Just turn it over. There. That looks like a cone, yeah. dude. <laughs> There's the lens. Oh my god! Look at that. Wow. Look at that beauty, right? Oh, that glass. Oh, that glass. I have to admit, it's beautiful. Oh my. Oh my goodness. Look at that, guys. That should be the thumbnail right there. But you know what's crazy? Um. 
So the Sigma 105, check it out. This right here, that's been off the screen, is this lens right here. Oh. This is the Sigma 120, the 300 f2.8 sports lens. It has the same exact filter thread size of the sports series lens Ooh. right here. Danny, put that away, man. That's, oh, my. This, this oh, is, my. Kids are part of the oh. show, dude. Put that away. <laughs> Um, so you can see there's quite a bit of glass in here and I have some bullet points that I can go over as far as the pros and cons with the lens so far. Some people, you know, what's funny when I had my post on Instagram, some, a couple of people are mentioning about the size and I don't know if some people are concerned about the overall size of this lens. And my honest opinion is everyone, well, everyone has their own taste, right? But if you want a larger lens on your camera, I mean, I don't see why not. Um, but let's see here. It, it, it can be unwieldy. I mean, I'll be honest, but I didn't have any problems shooting with it for like four or five hours on that weekend that I was shooting, but here's, <laughs> here it is right there. Oh man. There it the is. The traffic cone, dude. I'm going to call that a traffic cone. <laughs> and by the way, since it is an EF model, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have this part down here. So it's not. It's not unusual uh, the way it's set up. Now, I did shoot with a battery grip during the, the Philippine Weekend Festival. Um, so it made it much easier to handle. But you can shoot like this. And what's funny, I got a lot of people letting me know to be very, very careful. There's my focus where it's going on. Okay. They were telling me to be very careful because they were saying that there was issues with the MC11 mount and this lens because it's so heavy. But... A couple of things, the lens itself weighs about 3.62 pounds or 1.64 kilograms or something like that. This is about 3.2 or 3.3 pounds. So the weight of the 7200 is close to the weight of this actual lens. The only difference is that the weight distrib is distributed much better on this lens than it is on this. So the weight is really balanced out in this one section of the lens. Um, so it can be a little bit front heavy, obviously, but I. I mean, it's not too bad. I mean, if you're used to a 70 to 200, you can probably get yourself by on this. But so, um, so Danny, you're saying people are people are reporting that um, the lens is damaging the MC11 adapter? They're telling me to be very be cautious. Careful. I was just getting some DM okay. to be cautious about it. I didn't I didn't read anything officially. I, I didn't look anything up online, but I was being told just to be careful about it as far as the mounts concerned, because there's some potential issues that that can be had so if anyone knows about it, let me know in the chat but um but i'm pretty careful with it i wasn't like just holding it like this you know i, I would always just hold it by the lens for example oh, as yeah. i'm going around i it, it was much easier this way and then let me show you what the lens so the lens hood is not metal it's like a, a composite plastic or whatever so it keeps the the overall package lighter i suppose but here it is with the with the lens hood there. So if you want to get Jason Vong a really nice gift, if you guys really love him and you know how he does his Instagram photos, get him this lens. This <laughs> if you guys want to get Jason a present, get him this lens. This is the ultimate Instagram photo. <laughs> so if you want to just blow up the back. Thank you. That, I, I need that lens for all of my beautiful Instagram <laughs> photos. It currently so if you want an 85 8, but that 105 1.4 will come in clutch. It, it just, the image is, just, it renders images so nicely out of the out of focus areas. This looks really creamy and smooth. Um, it's just so delightful. But to, I still don't know if it's enough, like from an 85 to a 105, if it's worth the price of admission to 16 to $1,700 versus the 70, 85 1.8. But in my video, I basically conclude that obviously if you are a portrait photographer and your bread and butter is portrait photography, try renting the lens out. Isn't, isn't going to break the bank for you and just have at and have some fun with it. It's a really nice lens and it's incredibly sharp as well. And it's just fun uh, to try it out. But I would say it's very specialized for portraits and that's where its strong points are. Um, in the video I'm gonna release soon too, I do some video autofocusing tests on it and I also shoot like some birds flying in, in Malibu when I was on the beach. There were some birds flying around. It tracked it okay. Uh, initially had issues and then when I shot it again, it did track it pretty well flying in the sky. So 
Uh, you can track and shoot a little bit of moving subjects, but it wasn't be completely reliable in my opinion. So more use the lens more along the lines of um, for portraits is what I would say, especially if you're going to use it with like an adapter like this, or if you're going to wait for the uh, the the native version for Sony with this uh, that comes out for the FE. But yeah, man, this lens, Jason. So you you if you were to put that on an actual Canon EF mount, would you say the Focusing would be better for yes. the with the photos. Yeah. Yeah. But um, in autofocus continuous, it works really good. From okay. one subject to another, it, it's like this, man. It's it's no problem. It works just fine. Obviously, in AFS, you're getting like that weird. I don't know when you're in AFS. Is it just contrast or phase attack? I don't recall. So it kind of breathes a little bit when you're in AFS, which is kind of normal usually. But on AFC mode, autofocus continuous, it's it's pretty snappy back and forth from different subjects. So it's pretty darn good with that. So very cool. Um, but yeah, be on the lookout for that video. Um, I don't know if anyone has any questions there. Let's see. Bowcaster 1.4. It is good. I just don't know how much more. And Jason, I mean, you love bokeh, but do you think the general mass like i don't know if the general public would could really tell <laughs> that's the thing it's like i don't know it's kind of tough it's tough. tough call it's tough call um let's see so would you okay so like you know uh, my question is i have the 85 I have the 135 right yeah and, and and i know you didn't get to shoot that much portrait but in terms of like a general walk around lens do you find it difficult to shoot like with the 135, you find it too tight, or do you find it a good the 135 with the 105? Uh, 105. So like with the 135, I took it out to Universal, and I found it way too tight for a lot of things. Unless I'm at the, I've got the one, one of the water shows, it was perfect. Yeah. But for the most part, for any sort of general shooting, I found it way too close. Do you think um, the 105 will suffer that same problem, or do you think um, it's kind of a good balance between the 85 and the 135? Uh, I'm going to try and do a screen share. Let's see. Um, I don't know. Can you see my screen now or something like that? I can see your screen. Okay. I, it's probably going to be potato or something like that. But let's see. Like there's, I don't know if you can see, like there's the bouquet, like how that looks on this particular image. It's pretty round uh, towards the center area of the lens. Um, let's see here. So there's a shot of the, this this group that they were coming down in the car. They're like the, the ones who set up the whole event. But you can see that they're pretty far. It's not like a portrait photo, obviously, but you can still see that really nice separation around the subject and the background on this particular image. And then obviously here's Chester oh. <laughs> right there. <laughs> um, so this is more like your portrait almost, right? Like a full body portrait, but just take a look at the the rendering on the background, I, again, I, I don't know how well my internet is uh, showing this. Okay, here's kind of like a mid shot almost of an individual here. So you can kind of see kind of the rendering of the out of focus area on there. Again, sorry about that. It'll come out in my video review so you can see the images better. But it, it really does a good job of knocking a person out of the background really well. And then we have some people here as well. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, it's... But like I'm saying, though, I don't know if it's any different than if you were just going to use an 85. So when I shot at that event, I really felt kind of claustrophobic. Like my issue was as an event lens, the 105 was very restricting to me. I felt almost like I wanted the 70 to 200. I when I was shooting, I would, when I was shooting at the the festival, I was really I was I was going through this mental breakdown. I said I should have brought a 70 to 200. Because the 105 was not, I couldn't get tighter in my shots and I couldn't get wider in my shots, obviously. I would have been better off either with an 85 or a 135, Jason. So kind of going along those points that you're trying to say, you know, which one, um, it's kind of sits in the middle, which is kind of frustrating. So I would either have liked to have an 85 or a 135 in that kind of environment that I was in or stick with a 70 to 200, which would have been a much better choice for the kind of things I was doing. Although I was reviewing the 105, so that's the reason why I shot with the 105. But, oh, yeah. Yeah. Very cool. So if you have plenty of space to move, I mean, it's fine. I mean, it's it's it just it's just a magical lens. It's just if you want to go through the struggle of making that shot, it's going to look really good. Um, but yeah, that's the way I would put it, man. All right, let's see. Very cool.
Uh, Claude is saying still in love with the 100 G, the 100, the 100 G master, right? Is it, is it 105 or 100? It's a hundred. Yes. Yeah. I, I did like that lens when I, when I did a rental on it, I, I actually liked it. Um, how it renders it out. Let's see. Uh, John Louis Imperial said he believes Jason Lanier may have damaged his MC 11 adapter with the weight of the Sigma 105. Hmm. I mean, but that's where I was coming from. Ah. Huh. Chris Barr, you can't get past physics. It's gonna be a big. It's going to be big for full frame. Uh, let's see. Alan Andrews is asking, "How is it for video? Um, video. Anytime you're having these adapted lenses, and I think this is the same for all of the other Sigma lenses. It's not native performance. Don't expect it to be like a native." Sony lens. It's just not going to perform like that. It's still going to be adequate, but I, I personally wouldn't feel comfortable maybe in a more professional sit setting for it. Um, will it track the subject? Maybe not very well if they're running towards you, but maybe if they're kind of going laterally from the lens, like left and right. But if they're coming towards you and that autofocusing is having to work on that lens, it's probably going to struggle a bit more. Uh, and also you definitely gonna have you're gonna definitely gonna want a lot more contrast uh, on your subject for you to track it better but you're just not gonna get the same kind of like smooth tracking it will track it's just not as good as a native lens it's kind of hard to explain it better than that right now Ellen let's see per Anderson's asking compare it with the 135 f1.8 question mark. We might, we might, that might be we the worst. Might. We might. Jason, you don't have the 135 right now, right? No, I don't have it right now. No. I, unless you're talking about the Zeiss 135. <laughs> I still have that. <laughs> yeah. Let's see here. Chris Barr is saying the Sony Zeiss 135 F1.8 A-mount is still a lot smaller, even with the LA3 adapter. And the autofocusing continues good. That's good to know. Cool. Thanks, Chris Barr, for that. Uh, let's see. Law Atienza is saying that rant you gave me is now making me question my initial decision to jump on Sony for video. Why? I that? mean, how? Yeah, why? I, I don't. I wouldn't have said that. Yeah, if you're if you want to take advantage of the video autofocusing stuff, you really have to go with the native lens. If you want the video autofocusing to work consistently, you have to go that route. Yeah, you can adapt. If you, I mean, I try adapting, and it's just it's just horrible for autofocus for video. For photo, it's okay, but tracking wise, it's still gonna be way better with the with the native Sony lenses. Lorraine Freely Kirk says, "Jason's gonna hate me. I got the Sony RX100 Mark V floor model for a great deal with one a new one year warranty." Wait, why would I hate that? That's awesome. <laughs> you got a good deal out of it. Why not? <laughs> Uh, hey folks, we are kind of winding down already on the show. We are at that kind of point where we're taking Q and a questions. So, uh, feel free to go ahead and do hashtag Q and a, or drop some questions or comments or whatever you want to do. And, uh, we still got about 15 minutes on the show here, but let's take a look at the comments. Open QA. Yep. Hashtag QA. Valor 09 says the Sigma 85 is better. Whew. The Sigma 85 is a big lens too. That's a, Honking lens. Um, that's a tough call, man. Jason, yeah. would you take the Sigma 85 1.4 or would you just go all into the 105 1.4? That's the real question. That's tough. Um, which <laughs> you, you, it's weight wise, you, which one do you think it's? Oh, right? this is no, this is this is obviously heavier. Oh man, I don't know. That's tough. I'm already complaining about the weight about the 85. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Never mind then. Don't don't. I mean, it's great, but if I really want a 1.485, I'm going to go with the G Master, man. <sighs> this thing just makes rainbows, man. Just I, I know, <laughs> but it's just like... Uh, that's a one hefty lens to carry. I'm pretty sure if I were to stick that in my Peak Design sling, it, it, it wouldn't even close, I think. <laughs> I barely got that into the 13-inch uh, messenger bag from Peak Design. 
but it fits. I mean, it does fit, obviously, now with the lens hood on like this, but um, yeah, it's just yeah. bulbous. You know what? I, you know, uh, Danny, I think it, I think it fits in the Altura bag for sure, though. Oh, it absolutely <laughs> probably barely fits in the Altura bag. You know what? <laughs> Your one and only lens inside ads her bag. <laughs> La Tienza, will you consider picking up the Nikon mirrorless and compare it with the Sony so I don't have to? Um, I mean, I the only thing I could do is a rental on that. Uh, I'm pretty sure you're going to see like the, the Northrop's probably pick it up first or even Poland. But when it comes around, I mean, I'll definitely check it out though. I, d I can't tell you when that will happen though. I definitely want to pick it up and try. Tanner Sebastian, any tips for someone who wants to start a new channel for reviewing gear and teaching techniques for photography when balling on a budget? Who's balling on a budget? You or the subscribers? Tanner. Tanner. He's saying him, uh, this person, Tanner's balling on a budget. How do you make a YouTube channel? What's your tips, Jason? You just do it, man. You just find something that teaching photography, teaching techniques. I mean, just go for just what do you find that's missing from what we're doing? And what do you think that are, people are looking for? You know, when you want to capitalize on that. Yeah, I would I would try to definitely find a different angle, find a different style that works for you. Uh, if you want to grow quicker, if you're trying to figure out how to get things to review, you can always still reach out to companies. That's the, a good place to start. Um, but if you don't have a channel already, it's kind of hard to do that. In that case, either borrow stuff from friends or even uh, renting. consider renting. Um, you're, the only thing is you're going to have to invest money. Uh, that phrase is used a lot, invest money to make money. And so it's so true. Yeah, I, I invest a lot of money right back into the channel all the time. So that goes into rentals or whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough, man. I don't. I wouldn't say don't start just to see like you're going to make money or something like that. Just do it because you want to do it or you're not going to make it in the long run. That's all yeah. I would say. I feel like Danny and I kind of started the YouTube channel to contribute back. Mm -hmm. Like we, we were, we were looking up stuff that, you know, no one else was making. And then we had to like go out and buy it ourselves. And then we figured since we, you know, we learned that information, we might as well share it back to anybody who's looking to, you know, pick up the same lens with the same camera. Yeah, this it's funny. This is the lens that started my YouTube channel. Jeez. <laughs> this is it. It's so funny. If oh you go my. back to my first video, I unboxed this lens. And I had so many dislikes because it was so shallow depth of field in the video because that's just how <laughs> things were at the time. But yeah, this is the lens. It's because there was no video review about this lens. And so I went and brought it, bought it and uh, did a review on it or whatever, unboxing. So yeah, funny enough. There you go. Uh, All right, NBD visuals haven't picked it up yet, but thinking about the Altura eight millimeter f three point oh fish Wait, eyes. Wait, Maybe it'll come with a free bag. Is Altura? that real? There's an Altura lens. I have to get Rolling that. NBD. I have to get that now. <laughs> Altura everything. Altura ambassador. Let's do it. Oh shoot. Um, Terry Ling Q and A already got the fifty five f one point eight. Does it make sense to get the eighty five one point eight? Yeah, of course. <laughs> I think it does. I think there's a definite, there is a definite difference that extra 30 millimeters on the 85 is going to give you a completely different rendering than the 55. That's just my thoughts. But I would prioritize a 7200 if you're just looking at lens coverage. All right, uh, John Lee, have uh, have the A7R3 as a second body. Is the A7 III autofocusing speed com comparable to the A7R3? Is the A9 that much faster than both of them? Are we talking about photo-wise? Um, from my experience, uh, John, here's here's how it works. The A9 is going to be superior to the other two. Uh, and at the end of the day, it's going to be much faster in acquiring focus. Its its biggest strength is in the low light situations that it's put in. It's going to perform a little bit better in low in very low light circumstances than I found on the A7R3. I can't speak on behalf of the A7 III because I never did 
like a side by side on it. But I know when I was testing it out, the A9 had an advantage over the A7 or three in lower light conditions. Daytime stuff, autofocus felt pretty much the same for the A7 III and the A7 R3. Uh, that's just how I, I experienced it when shooting sports, like um, very low light, like 12,800 ISO, 16,000 ISO. Chris Imamura, QA. Danny, do you use screen protectors on your cameras? If you do, what kind? I just buy usually third party, like a glass version of it. If I, there was one time I picked up the Sony version but yeah, I just got like a glass one and I have that on there. And this is like chipped a little bit. So it's, it's actually helped out. So it's chipped on the corner. So it's coming handy already. Nice. Fathom Rocker QA Sony 35 1.4 for video. And I just lost the question. Oh, Fathom Rocker 35 1.4 for video or should I just try the Rokinon? So I'm assuming the Sony 35 1.4 Zeiss versus the Rokinon. Um, dude, did I test out the Rokinon? I didn't test out the, I tested out the 50s. So I don't know about how the Rokinon is for video. Go for the Zeiss, man. <laughs> <laughs> if you need video autofocus, I would just go for the Zeiss. It was solid. It compared to the Sigma, it was solid, dude. And drop in 1999, Chris Varnall. He says, welcome back, Danny, and another great show to both of you. Thanks for hanging out on my lunch break. LOL. No problem, Chris. I'm glad Chris we can. kind, man. Too kind. Too kind. He is. Move that kind. decimal a few uh, few numbers back, and I'll get <laughs> that. Sigma, one, Sigma 105. <laughs> I'm messing. I'm messing. Uh, Lex Chavez, QA, what's a good zoom lens for conventions that's under $1,000? A Tamron 20 to 75. Booyah, you got it right there. Tamron 20 to 75. Moving on. <laughs> um, Chris Vornow, debating a second body for vlog and B-roll. Should I wait until fall until a new gear drops or pick up the 63 or 6500? Just wait till after this month. Yeah, just wait. I mean, try to try to wait till the end of this month. <laughs> whoa, whoa, Danny, what? what's going on? <laughs> whoa, whoa, waiting for Nikon and Canon stuff, you know? Um, <laughs> just trying to deflect. Uh, um, yeah, if you can wait, I would just wait just a little bit longer. I would wait if you see, honestly. if you see a really good deal. I mean, there's Chris, let's see, yeah, man, I would. Try to wait. Try to wait a little bit longer. Yeah, I would um, wait. Let's, yeah, just try to wait till the end of the month, maybe for sure. Terry J Photography is asking. So my final verdict on the 105, would I buy it? I'm assuming we're talking about the 105. Um, since I'm not like a portrait photographer, bread and butter, I wouldn't pick up the 105 personally. I'd be more interested in the Sigma 135 over this one, only because I like the 135 focal length a little bit more for maybe the sports that I shoot indoors, like in gyms. The 105, I absolutely love it. It's just very specialized. That's the only thing I would say. And I've already got an 85, so I don't feel a big benefit for me to have this particular lens. So that's what I want to say. Uh, but if you're a portrait photographer, I, I recommend anyone that's like really into photo portraits, that's your bread, that's like your thing, rent it first and then see if it's worked for you. But that 85, though. Oh, 85 1.8 is good, man. Solid. Yeah, it's uh, pretty solid. Avi asks QA 70 millimeter macro Sigma versus Sony 50 millimeter macro. Ooh. I didn't I didn't get to do a test on those other than just the 70. Um Danny says just go straight for the 90. Yeah. But if you can't budget at the 70, my thing with the 70 was the autofocusing wasn't good. The 90s was better. Right. The 70 was more if you're willing to just wait and, and have a tripod set up and everything. The 70 was just good. Uh, the 90 was just like, I want to get stuff done. Take the 90. 70, you have a little more time to work with your macro shots. The 70 is fine. The 50, I didn't really get to play around with much because I was being too lazy, unfortunately. And so I don't know how all well that performs completely. I think it's OK. So I used to we used the 50 for macro ring shots at weddings. We love it. It's perfect. There you go. 
Um, Valor09, have you got your hands on the new Nikon mirrorless system, and are you guys going to change the Nikon once you try it out? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, it's it's a tough change, Valor, unless there's like, because for sure you're going to have to buy a new mount and everything. So unless Nikon's willing to let me burn all my gear and they're going to replace every single lens with a new one, then it's not going to happen right now. Yeah, it's tough, man. I mean, like, it's going to be a long game for Nikon because then they now they, they're the ones who need to catch up with their lenses for their mirrorless system. Unless they, you know, they will take their old lenses and adapt to it. But, you know, performance is questionable. We don't know yet. Vincent Vega, I asked last week but didn't get to ask Danny, what am, what am I missing out on if I don't have a website? What can I do with a website that I can't do with social media? Is it a waste? Um, you know, if you're ever applying for certain things like affiliate programs, they do ask for a website sometimes. So having websites can be good in that case. Um, <laughs> they do ask for websites. I do post my photos on there. And so I can always direct someone there instead of just saying, Hey, go to my Instagram. So there's a place that houses my images. But other than that, that's kind of how I use my website. I get, it gets traffic. I, I see the metrics people are going to it. So, and I get comments on my website once in a while. So people are using it, but other than that, I don't, I, I can't really tell you if it's going to work out for you personally. Michael Mistro, Danny, if you point that lens at someone in the battlefield, you will scare the S out of them. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. <laughs> Photo me, I the A9 is still one of the best cameras out. The electronic shutter is on another level. It is. It is absolutely. And Jason doesn't have an A9. Let's keep going. Um, wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, he doesn't know what he's missing out on. Sony A9. Right, Michael? You're he not, doesn't you're know not, what he's You're missing. not seeing the hand under the table giving you a certain... <laughs> Andy Garcia, can you one of you guys test a Tokina Furin 20 millimeter lens? Can't find a good review anywhere. Um, I would love to play with that lens. Hopefully soon. Yeah, the Tokina. I don't know. It's a very interesting lens. Travis, let's see here, man. Um He's asking, how good is the Flashpoint Explorer? I don't have the Pro model, the R2. He's saying it's on sale as a kit right now on Anorama with the Glow Parapop and C-Stand. Uh, would be pairing with the Sony A9. Um, man, I don't know if you can hit up uh, Francisco on that one. He definitely does use that series. I don't use it enough. I would imagine the light itself would be pretty good, but in terms of pairing it with a Sony A9, I don't know for a fact. Yeah, I don't I, shoot I, with the A9. I, yeah, I, I don't use, I use like my A7 III or A7R III when I'm using my lights usually. So I don't want to give you like misinfo, Travis. So um, I can't really I says it's one of the best. If it works out well, then that's good to know. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll take a few more questions, folks, and we'll wrap up for the rest of this evening. Awaji88, can you guys tell us why most photographers prefer 85 than a 55 or a 54 portraits? It just looks more flattering, and that compression. Yeah, I think the 85 just does a really good job. I, I think I'm just more reiterating sort of what's been said before. Um, it does make your subject matter look flattering as well. Um, and the out of focus renderings look really nice. And I, I guess that's just kind of what people are using. I, there's more to it than that, obviously. Wash 88. 
Photo Miyike says, if you want to be taken seriously, you need to have a website. Per Anderson's asking, what happened to the Alpha 6700? Any news? Um, just wait until the end of the month, maybe. Maybe we'll see something. <laughs> what was that? Jason, are you okay? Do oh, you need man. some water? Daddy, what <laughs> do you know, man? What do you know? You're killing me. I don't, I don't know anything, man. I'm just, I'm just excited about Nikon and Canon coming out with their stuff, dude. I'm waiting for the end of the month. Man. You know something. <laughs> I don't know anything, dude. Nothing happened when I was gone. <laughs> it, Nikon, yeah. Nikon took him out. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> uh, James, Danny, do you have a Sigma 105 workout on your Apple Watch to track kilojoules? <laughs> yeah, how many calories did you burn working with that 105? Uh, not enough. Not enough. This is actually a pretty good one. I, I'll, I'll kind of use this on the sidelines. It usually has a collar on here, but this one's like set like eleven pounds, I think. This thing, I'm sweet, but I don't remember, like ten pounds or something. Uh, Dave Sincere saying, do you guys use invoicing software to bill clients? Uh, I haven't done enough of that. Dave, so I can't really comment on that too well. I we're don't know if playing, Jason has we're, it. we're playing with a few right now. Um, I don't know what they're called because Vivian's the one who's using it. So ask next week. I know Quickens. I use Quickens to track all my expenses. I know they have like an invoicing option, but I haven't used it yet. All right. Flypath dropping ten dollars. Thank you. I appreciate it. Just thanks for your time tonight, fellas. Thank you, Flight Path, for joining us. Thank you, Flight Path. Abby says, you guys are terrible at hiding secrets, LOL. <laughs> I mean, I wish we were hiding something. but We don't know anything, man. We are just guessing that we're... I can, I can speak for myself, but Danny, I don't know, dude. This guy, that that Malibu trip, quote-unquote, I don't know where they took him to. Or... Nothing happened, bro. How many I lenses just... they paid him in, but he's definitely <laughs> no something. Maybe the rumors will come true, or they're going to say that Nikon bought that one camera guy out, right? I remember that last last summer. That's what Jared Poland posted in his video. <laughs> he was like, that one camera guy was bought. They had rumors were saying that he was bought out by Nikon. The sales was the most random thing summer. ever. Freaking hilarious. Then again, I don't know Danny, so... True. True. Rumors. You never know, man. How much you never know. Uh, do you think uh, Vincent's asking, do you guys think Nikon and Canon will make, still make DSLRs? Yeah. It still sells. Absolutely. Nathan <laughs> cornered. So I got the kit lens for the A7 III and the, and the 85 1.8. What should be my next investment when I mainly shoot landscape and portraits? 16 to 35. Either the F4 or the 2.8 variant. Well, I don't know if you need a 70 and 200 for your portraits, though. I mean, I, I've heard of people using 70 and 200 for landscapes for, for framing. So I don't know if that might be another thing on your radar. Yeah. Um, Chris Barr, QA, how was the 105 on the A7S3 on the yearbook trip? Well, Chris Barr was great, but I wasn't using any 7S3. <laughs> <laughs> have to get on that Nikon mirrorless. <laughs> this is the reason why I don't get invited to anything, guys. You guys are the reasons why they will never invite me because I can't keep my mouth shut. That's why they will never be trusted for anything. So, yeah, that's why I don't know anything. But Chris Barr knows all. Dude, there's too many <laughs> rumors circulating around Danny. So. What, what rumors are you talking about? Dude? <laughs> Stop making stuff. Yeah. <laughs> How did the whole Nikon mirrorless thing come up last week, dude? Someone why you gotta, know, it's almost like, I think daddy's not here. Why, why, are you telling, why are you telling people that, man? Why are they, I didn't don't tell people know. that. Someone started it. 
<laughs> might have been Chris Barr. I don't know. Oh my god. I don't want to be name dropping people. Top, I top mean, if Nikon, if Nikon reached out to me, yeah, of course I'd go check it out. Why the heck would I not? You know, I think I remember. Oh. I think I think Vince Vega had it you. So, ah, uh. <laughs> oh man, it's not like it's not like Sony asking me to go check anything out anyway. All right, <laughs> shoot. All right, Andy Garcia hashtag Nikon Gate. Yes, you are correct. Uh, Lex Chavez hashtag Nikon bought Danny out. That needs to be the shirt next week. Let me get that going right now. <laughs> Gonna All right, we'll take a Nikon few. Nikon shirt, Nikon hat, Nikon watch. Oh man, hell yeah! All right, so, uh, we'll take a couple more comments here. Swammy, Swammy saying Tamron twenty to seventy five or the twenty four one hundred five f four, which is the sharper lens. Please let us know. I think I did a review on this, but the Tamron, the central sharpness is really good at wide open at f two point eight. The Sony 24105 at f4 is just sharp across. Like it's just good all around already at 24105. I don't know if that helps you there though, but that's a tough comparison. I I, I went through all of those in my video, like that that monstrosity of a video. I, I think I covered that. So uh, that's what I recollect, Swami, from a video that I did on the review. So um yeah, if you if you just want like sharpness across the board. The Sony 24105 F4. If you just want central sharpness important to you at wide open, the Tamron's good. Um, let's see here. The Mitten Dad, hello from Michigan. What is going on? Hi, Michigan. Louis Avales, Fro knows rumors. And Fathom Rocker, Danny is equal to that one Nikon guy. There you go. Awesome. Jason, what do we have to look forward to from you? <laughs> I don't How many know. videos? <laughs> Like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. I don't know what I'm doing anymore, dude. Um, <laughs> definitely. Um, there's going to be a couple, couple, I think it's going to be the next couple of weeks is just shooting week for me just to prep for some materials for future YouTube videos. Uh oh. But nothing, nothing too exciting happening for the next couple of weeks, mm -hmm. just shooting. So check out my Instagram story if you guys get the chance. There'll be a lot of BTS on those shoots. He, say, he says that now and then he goes off to the A7S3. <laughs> Like, hey guys, right here. <laughs> we probably should stop talking about that. That's why Jason can't get into that event either, guys. Come on. You want to see A7S3? It's right here. <laughs> what the? <laughs> <laughs> I'm so jealous. I need that in my life. Uh, all right. Uh, that's going to do it for us this evening, guys. The show's going to be, I think, on Jason's channel next week. And I'll be getting back to work already next week. I'm very excited. I wish the 400 2.8 was in. I think there's like a foot, some football, some sports stuff going down soon on my end. So I'm excited about that. And I do appreciate every single one of you joining us again for this evening's live show. And I'm glad to be back. Don't forget to smash that like button. Check out our content. Subscribe if you haven't done so. And I will catch you later. Peace. Peace. See you later. Bye.